So rather depressingly, I very much agree with uh, Brian because it is a marketplace of ideas, at least in theory. And as long as there are equations and ideas and people who wish to explore them, the ideal of the scientific community is that we should do exactly that. And the problem is, is that that is not exactly how science works. And in particular, uh, this ignores the entire political economy of science, which has to do with jobs, claims, public relations, and effectively diverting the resources of the community, which are never uh, particularly generous after the Cold War era, um, towards string theory. And it's not just a question of, let's say, delivering better pizzas, but also slashing the tires of the op opposing pizza parlor. And so the real problem is, is that we keep talking about what we're comfortable with, which is uh, the nature of the ideas. Um, string theorists often say that's not how science works. And I'm the concern about string theory is that string theory works like no other science. And so the biggest complaint that many of us have is, is that string theory uh, sets itself up as the judges and referees who's winning, who's losing, what's the best leading theory, and finding themselves virtuous in almost all uh, contests. So it's like playing a team verse of, of referees uh, who may not necessarily be better footballers, but tend to uh, find that they always win the game. So let's save the time for debate and uh, let's get into it. Well, I think the trouble with string theory is that there isn't any connection with observations. I'm probably taking too strong a view here. But uh, the mathematics, I mean, it's largely driven by the mathematics as far as I know, which is in itself is not an objection as far as I'm concerned. A lot of what I do is driven by the mathematics. But the trouble with string theory is it's supposed to be a theory of the way the world operates. And if the number of dimensions of space is just wrong, I can't take it seriously. And I, I mean, there are arguments why all these extra dimensions are hidden, and I don't think those arguments are right either. So I'm just left in a position where I don't, the problem is not so much, you know, how much mathematics or how much physics or what. We're not talking about things which can be experimentally tested anyway, as far as I can see. If you could have a theory which had predictions, and these predictions could be seen to be right or wrong, that's what I understand about physics. But string theory seems to me driven largely by certain ideas which have importance in mathematics, but sort of irrelevant to the physics, really. As far as I know, those places where string theory has had an impact on mathematics, sure, it has, but it's not physics, as far as I can see. So uh, I have the main trouble I have with, with string theory is I don't think it's physics. So um, I appreciate your remarks, Roger. Obviously, I have a, a different perspective on it. One, when it comes to the fact that various formulations of string theory do require extra dimensions, that's, of course, a long-standing program that existed long before string theory, the whole Kaluza-Klein program dating back to the early decades of the 20th century is one that considered the possibility that our universe might actually have extra dimensions. The issue of exciting modes in the extra dimensions is one that I think we understand reasonably well, that the energy goes like one over the putative size of the extra dimensions. So if their size is sufficiently small, the energy that needs to be focused in a sufficiently small region to excite those modes is larger than any energy that we have access to. But if we did have that energy, we would be able to excite those modes I have a feeling that we're not going to be able to settle that in, in this discussion here, but I'm not concerned. And in fact, moreover, I've spent decades thinking about those extra dimensions. So I think it's actually a very fruitful part of the theory, as opposed to something that is a, a detriment or something that is an embarrassment. It's a wonderful quality of the theory. In terms of whether string theory is physics, I would put forward two points. Number one, the whole reason why we are interested in string theory is that we believe the world is governed at least in certain energy scales by the general theory of relativity giving us our theory of gravity we believe that on sufficiently small scales quantum mechanics shows its colors and we believe there are realms in which general relativity and quantum mechanics need to play together and without a theory of quantum gravity physics is at a loss for how to proceed and so the value of string theory in physics is that it gives us a quantum theory of gravity. That's why we're interested in it, and that's why it's part of physics. I agree fully that we don't understand the theory well enough yet to draw direct 
predictions for things that we can go out and measure. That's why it is a theory, very much a theory in progress. And how long will it take to extract those kinds of predictions? I don't know. I wish we had those predictions too, because if we could verify them, great. If we could prove the theory wrong, fantastic too. 